Hi, welcome to Stream Developers. Let's build an audio remark similar to X Spaces or formerly Twitter Spaces. We will use the Streams Video SDK for React Native, allowing developers to build VoIP experiences like live streaming and video calling. Our audio remark will run on Streams Global Edge Network for optimal latency and to provide support for unlimited listeners or users. When people join a live audio room, they can request to speak and leave the room quietly without others being notified. You can run the app on both iOS and Android. I will also show you how multiple people can join the audio room using our companion web app. So install Xcode, VS Code and Android Studio and let's begin with the following tab test. We will start with a React Native CLI project. Then we install the necessary dependencies. I will show you how to set up the audio room SDK to work with our React Native app. Finally, we will add UIs for the audio room. You will find the source code in this GitHub repository under React Native and then Audio Room. We have both initial Audio Room UIs as well as the final Audio Room UIs. So you can check and explore each of these TypeScript files which we will use in building the Audio Room app. Before we begin, it will be great if you can like and subscribe to this channel or leave a comment on the video. Leaving a comment will help us understand how you feel about the videos and how we can do better. Let's launch Terminal and create a new React Native project using the CLI by using this command. This command uses the official React Native template to create a new app named Audio Room. So I will press Enter and wait for some time. After a successful installation, you will get a welcome screen that looks like this. So you make sure you have all these green check marks. If you encounter an error, you can check our video React Native CLI installation issues to learn more about how to install the React Native CLI correctly and set it up. I will open the app in VS Code and install all the dependencies for this app. In VS Code, I will open the app's root folder. Over here, I went ahead to add this folder. It contains all the various screens of the app. So I have all these files containing the various screens. We will come to that later, but now let's install the Streams Video SDK for React Native by opening a new terminal. Using the Streams Video SDK, you can build VoIP applications such as video calling, audio room, and live streaming. To use the SDK in our React Native project, we need to install it. It also has some other dependencies. Let's install the SDK first, followed by its dependencies. We can install the video SDK with YAN or NPM. It doesn't matter which one you use. So let's paste this command and press enter. You can see over here that added the packages. The video SDK also has some other peer dependencies. So let's install them all with this command. The first one is React Native In-Call Manager, which handles call events like switching the camera on and off, and also muting and unmuting audio. Here we have React Native SVG. This will provide SVG support for the app. Then we have NetInfo. This package provides access to network information, like a connection type and quality. Lastly, we have Notify. Notify is a notification system for React Native. So let's press enter to install them all. We have now installed the video SDK and its dependencies. Let's look at how we can configure it to build our audio room app. Next, we will do some configurations for Android and iOS. So we will do them in the Android and iOS folders. Let's start with the iOS folder first. Here we need to set permission for microphone usage. In the iOS folder, you will look for the file info.plist. Below this key, Let's add another key here. When users launch the app for the first time, they will be prompted with this message to allow or disallow the use of their microphones. On Android, we have to set a similar permission. I have already added that. So let's go to the Android folder. I want to show you what I added. Here we need to expand the folder app, then XRC and main and select Android manifest.xml. Over here, I added all these lines. For Android permission. So we have permissions such as microphone, recording audio, and access to the user's network. To run the app on Android, it should meet the minimum source and target compatibility versions of Java. To set the Java version, 
we select the Android folder. Then we go to App. In the App folder, we look for Build.Gradle. I have already added this, so I will scroll down. You can see here, we have Compile Options. Here we set both source and target compatibilities. The last Android configuration is to turn off using newer Java language features. With this, we open the Android folder and select Gradle.Properties. So on this line, you can see I have set the shoe grain to false. Setting the shoe grain to false will disable the use of newer Java language features. Next, let's go to the SRC folder and display an initial screen for our audio room app. I have already added all these files for our audio room. There is a control panel for the audio room, the description of the room, the list of participants, then the audio room UI. The home screen is empty. We will add it soon. When the app launches, we need a button to go live. So this implementation is done in this file. Then we have another button to toggle the microphone state on and off. So let's go to the home screen and add an initial UI. Then we run the app to see if everything runs successfully. So over here, I will import the necessary models from React and React Native. Then here, I will define these props to navigate to the call screen. Next, I will create a home screen component that returns a welcome message and also a button to navigate to the call screen. Then finally, I will define some styles for the components. Let's go to app.tsx and do some configurations. Let's import the necessary modules and components. To access the video SDK, we need a valid user and user token. Let's declare the following for the user. So here we have an API key. You can get the API key from your streams dashboard. If you're new to stream, you can check our website and sign up for free. I will add a link to the description of this video. The next is the token. For a production app, the token could be generated from your server side when the user logs in or signs up. For this demo, we have generated all the user credentials for you. For testing, you can use your API key and our token generator service and generate a user token if you don't have a server. I will add a link to the description of the video. Next, in the main app component, we initialize these functions to switch to the call screen and the home screen. Then over here, we conditionally display the call screen or the home screen based on the active screen. Finally, I will add the following styles for the component. Let's display the initial screen on an iPhone. To do that, we need to do some settings in Xcode. So let's go to the apps root folder. I will click to open audio room. Then we go to the iOS folder. Over here, you can see we have an Xcode file. But what we need to open in Xcode is this file, audio room.xc workspace. Let's control click that and open with Xcode. In Xcode, you should select the apps root folder and click the tab info. First, we need to check the microphone permission we set in VS Code. So you can see here, we have this key, privacy, microphone usage description, and it is set to the app name would like to use your microphone. So this is fine. Next, we go to sign in and capabilities. Under targets, we have to set the bundle ID. So you can see here, the team is set to my name. Then we have the bundle ID com.emosgenfi.audio room. So for the test targets, we need to do the same thing. So I will copy this one and paste it here. Then I will append text. So once we do these settings, we can run the app from here or go back to VS Code and run it from there. We can use the command NPS React Native Run iOS. You can see over here that launches the Metro server. And in the command line, it is still building the app on my iPhone. So you can see here the app is now installing on my iPhone. So I need to wait for some time. So let's go to the iPhone and launch the app. And this displays the initial screen. Join the React Native audio room. You can now see everything is working successfully. Let's go ahead and configure the SDK and display our audio room UI. To set up the video SDK, we are going to update our app.tsx. First, let's update the imports so that we import stream video. 
and the stream video client. In our implementation, we will wrap our component tree with the stream video component and provide the stream video client instance as a prop. So what does stream video do? It helps to manage audio and video calls and provides the necessary state and methods to build the app's UI. To run the app successfully, we need to fill all these placeholders of the user credentials. I'm going to fill all these credentials with hard-coded values. To test the app, you can get the user credentials from the audio room tutorial on our website. I will add a link to the description of the video. So I will go ahead and fill the other ones. Next, we will create a user with user ID, name, and avatar. Then we will create a stream video client and initialize it with the API key, the user, and the user token. Let's also modify the main app component. First, we set the initial screen as the home screen. Then we define this function to switch to the call screen and this one to switch back to the home screen. Then over here, we conditionally display the call screen or the home screen based on the active screen. From the call screen, we import the call type from the video SDK. Then we define the following props the call screen will receive. Next, we create the call screen component itself. Over here, we create an instance of the stream video client and use it to create a call of the type audio room and a call ID. After creating the call, we need to join it to allow real-time transport for audio. After we join the call, the use effect hook helps to handle the call's life cycle. So what the join method does is that if the call does not exist, we create it with some call members. Then we set the title of the audio room and its description. And after joining the call, we can then go live and also update the call state. So this is all we need for our call screen. In summary, we create and join the call to allow real-time transport for audio. Let's go ahead and run the app and join from the web using the companion audio room web app. The update we just did has been successfully installed on my iPhone. So let's go ahead and launch the companion web app. Over here, I will join the audio room with any of these users. You can see here we have different categories, upcoming, ended, and live. We are now in the live category. So let's select the React Native one. You can see over here, we have two participants, one from the iPhone app and one from the web app. So once you join the audio room, you can raise your hand to speak. You can also leave the room quietly without others being notified. Now you can see we have only one participant in the audio room. That is all we have in this video. I will say congratulations. You have created your first audio room app for iOS and Android using the Streams Video SDK for React Native. You learned how to set up the video SDK to build an audio room experience similar to XSpaces or formerly Twitter Spaces. You can check the sample app on GitHub and head to the Streams React Native SDK documentation to learn more about advanced features of the audio room such as requesting to speak. Thanks for watching this video and wait for the next.